This is the third video on differentiation. Um, hopefully you've already watched the first two videos where you saw uh, where the topic comes from and how we can differentiate from first principles. In this video I'm going to show how that can turn into a, into a general rule to save you from having to go through that whole process. So, um, let's do it for a couple more examples and then we can hopefully see where this general rule is coming from. So I'm going to differentiate x squared from first principles. So if we do that, then I'm going to get So just using my differentiation from first principles formula, um, I've got f of x plus h, so that's going to be x plus h all squared minus x squared over h. If I expand this bracket, then I'm going to get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus the x squared all over h. The x squared will cancel. And I will get, um, I can cancel the h here, this h, and that power of 2. So I will get 2x plus h. And as h tends towards 0, this whole thing will tend towards 2x. So x squared differentiates to give 2x. So I've just added that into my table here. So when I differentiate x squared, I get 2x. Let's look at x cubed. Let's see what happens there. So, same idea. Uh, my f of x is going to be uh, my f of x plus h. So, f is x cubed. So I get x plus h, all cubed, minus x cubed over h. Okay, expanding this out, I've already done it in the previous video, you need to see how to, um, a reminder of how to do that from first principles, or you can use the binomial theorem, um, but expanding that out, It's going to give me x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed. The minus x cubed is there, and I've got h in the bottom. Cancelling, and dividing by the h. So dy by dx to the limit as h tends towards 0 of 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared. And as h tends towards 0, both of these terms here will tend towards 0, and I will just get 3x squared. So, Differentiating x cubed gives 3x squared. So that's two results. Some of you might be spotting a pattern at the moment. What I might do actually, when I say 2x, that's like saying 2x to the power of 1. So if I write that like that, you might be able to spot the pattern here. I'm going to do x to the power 4 as well. I'm not going to do it all the way through. I'm just going to, in fact, I think I've already written it out a little bit. Here we go. Yep. So x to the power 4, here's the definition. If I expand this out, this is what I get. Again, use the binomial theorem. Um, or if you want me to explain this in detail, where this comes from, just let me know at the beginning of the next lesson. Um, 
So here we go, cancelling the terms and dividing by h, I get all of this, and then letting h tend towards zero, I get 4x cubed. So this gives me 4x cubed. Okay, hopefully you can see the pattern now. I'm just going to do uh, one final example for the top one. The simplest one, so y equals x. So in this case here, the function is just, so when, when I substitute x plus h into here, I just get x plus h. So then when I simplify that, I get h over h, which is 1. And in the limits, h tends towards 0, I get 1. That doesn't change, because h tends towards 0. So differentiating the x, I get 1. Or alternatively, looking at the powers, I could write x as x to the power 1. Now over here, there's no power of x. I could write that as being x to the power 0. Obviously, we would never write 1 as being 1 times x to the power 0, but hopefully that can show you the pattern a bit more. So, what is the pattern here? What's happening? Well, hopefully you can see, as I've got power, so as this power 2 became the 2 at the front here. This power 3 became the 3 at the front. That pattern 4, no, that power 4 became the 4 at the front. This power 1 has become the 1 at the front. So what happened to the power? Well, when it was a 4, it became a 3. When it was a 3, it became a 2. 2 became a 1, 1 became a 0. So what's happening here is we are multiplying by the power and then we are subtracting 1 from it. So our general rule is if I have y equals x to the power n, when I differentiate that, I get n x to the n minus 1. power comes to the front, I multiply by that power, and then I subtract 1 from it. So, let's go back and check that with the, the couple of examples I did in the previous video. These are the two examples I did from first principles. So when I differentiate this first one, let's use this rule that we've just discovered. So here, when I differentiate um, the 2x squared, so this squared comes to the front, and I'm multiplying by 2, so we get 2 lots of 2x, which is 4x, and the power there, so what, uh, 2 take away 1 is just 1. So I could write it as 4x to the power 1, or I could just write it as 4x, This x here, that's like saying x to the power 1. So I can move the power 1 to the front, so I'll get minus 1. The x here, um, so the power here, 1 take away 1 is 0. So I'm not going to write down x to the power 0 because it is just 1. The 5, well, let's just remember what we're doing here. We're working out the change. 5 is a constant number. That never changes. So when we differentiate that, we get zero. There is zero change in that. So that's why I'm not going to have anything over there. So that is exactly the same answer we got in the last video when we differentiated this from first principles. Go back and check if you want to, you'll see you get the same answer. Obviously this rule works a lot quicker. Differentiating here, Again, the answer that you saw in the previous video was that we got 3x squared plus 4, and hopefully you can see now why that works. So, one last example, 
If I want to differentiate this, I am going to write dy by dx. So, times by the 5 and I get 15. 5, take away 1, will be 4. Times by the 3, so that's going to be 6x squared. Times by the 2, so I get minus 2x. I'm not going to bother writing the power to 1, I don't need to. 6, x will just become 6, because the power 1 times by the 6 will be 6, taking 1 away from that power won't, will mean there's an x to the power 0, so I don't need to write that down. And the 10 is a constant term, so I, when I differentiate that, it is 0, so I don't need to write anything else. And there we go.